This is a cultivated variety of Diffenbachia or dumb cane known as Diffenbachia reflector. And I can't remember exactly where I first saw Diffenbachia reflector, but it probably had to be around two years ago. And I absolutely love the coloration of Diffenbachia. It's definitely not one of my favorite plants because these have a tendency to get really stemmy down below. This is a relatively new one in my collection, so it doesn't look that stemmy. But you could always like cut the stems and reroot them and have a little bit more of a bushy plant or give them a little bit more top-down light, which is what I'm doing with this one. I actually have this growing in the interior of my space underneath a grow light, but that being said, the, I have a philodendron that's kind of growing up and some taller aglionemas that are growing around. So this is getting a little bit more like moderate light conditions. Now I have two of these and one is growing in my Southwest facing window and that kind of intensity of light seemed to be fine for the plant for a while, but now it's feeling as if it's like ailing a little bit. So, and the one that's actually growing under my grow light kind of in the interior of my space seems to be thriving. So. It's hard to know what's going to play out with, with both of them, but I think for right now, the one that looks the healthiest, healthiest and is doing the best is the one that's growing under a grow light and giving more moderate light conditions. Now, because it's a cultivated variety, you can't really say, oh, well, this is growing in this kind of habitat because it's a hybrid or it's been selected from um, various different Diffenbachia, but because of the darkness of the leaf, I would imagine that this has a little bit more chlorophyll, so it's used to growing in a little bit more moderate conditions. Now I have this growing right now in a cash po right here, so it's still within its, um, its plastic pot, and I'm just having a little bit more of a decorative planter. Actually, this is not typically a cash po because um, it has a hole in the bottom, so it, it is allowed in order to be able to wash into the, the planter base or the saucer that's actually below. Now as far as fertilizing this goes, most of my Diffenbachia, I just give a standard well-balanced fertilizer. So like a 20-20-20 or a 10-10-10. If you're going organic, then a 1-1-1 or a, a 2-2-2. Just mind you, if you're doing the synthetic route, which has the higher numbers of the NPK, then maybe dilute it by a quarter to a half um, of what it calls for on the back of that container because I never actually like to over-fertilize my plants. It could actually be very damaging to it. But if you're noticing a, a nice flush of growth, then you might want to um, fertilize it a little more in the spring and summer times. Um, I tend to fertilize them a bit more in the summertime when they're really growing. Spring, I kind of just angle in, you know, just a little bit of the fertilizer because it's just starting to, to grow a little bit more. But I have this, it's, um, it's in the fall approaching winter months time right now. And this is still putting off a lot of really beautiful, healthy growth but I'm not fertilizing it at all at the moment. Now, as far as what I'm growing this in, right now it's in the grower's mix, but I would typically grow this in a little bit more of a typical potting soil mix, nothing that's spe uh, spectacular, too special. And I found with a lot of aeroids, because um, this is in the group of aeroids like philodendrons and monstras and raphidophoras, that it's, it's pretty resilient when it comes to water. So if you give it a lot of water, then make sure that it drains out and then it dries out in between. But um, if you're in underwater or overwater, sometimes it doesn't actually um, have that much of a of a effect on uh, Diffenbachia. They seem to be very, very resilient plants and they seem to grow in a range of conditions as well, which makes them a very good houseplant.